Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing what I'm calling a let's chat video, which I have done on occasion before, but I'm thinking about making them a more regular occurrence because sometimes you just need the opportunity to sit and brain dump about something or chat about something. And I was really at a loss for what I wanted to film today. So I took to you guys and took to the internet and I was like, hey guys, I want to chat about something and I'm not sure what you guys want to hear me chat about. What do you want to know? And someone said self-sabotage and that got me thinking, ooh, really good subject, really relatable subject because it is something that I am an artist at. I actually wrote a blog post, I can't tell you how long ago exactly, called The Art of Self-Sabotage because I deemed myself an artist on just that very subject. So today we are going to chat about self-sabotage. But before I get started, because I want to make this a regular occurrence, I want your input. So let me know in the comments below what some future Let's Chat video subjects should be. And this could be anything. I mean, I can sit down and chat about basically any subject. So anything you're interested in, anything you want to kind of get my stream of consciousness thought in, let me know because I'd be happy to incorporate them into a future video. So what I read, self-sabotage, over on my Facebook page, I was like, hmm, I should take notes. So I have actually pages of notes here because it's such a good, good topic to talk about and I want to make sure that I don't miss anything even though it is sort of a stream of consciousness thing. So first, I wanted to get you the exact definition of self-sabotage, which is this. According to Psychology Today, the definition of self-sabotage is behavior that creates problems and interferes with long-standing goals. The most common self-sabotaging behaviors are procrastination, self-medication with drugs or alcohol, comfort eating, and forms of self-injury such as cutting. Now I can't say that all of these versions of self-sabotage are applicable to me, but I can tell you the two that are procrastination and comfort food. I mean, let's be honest, if we weren't comfort food eaters here, we wouldn't be here regularly talking about weight loss and Weight Watchers and all of those good things, right? And seeking comfort in food is one of the self-sabotaging things that we can do that completely derails our weight loss efforts. So self-sabotage is basically things you do to derail the effort when you're working towards your goals. And I have two primary goals that I am regularly striving for and working towards that I manage to self-sabotage myself in. And I know the let's chat is basically just let's chat about self-sabotage and strategies, but I don't feel like it's a legit conversation unless I can give you personal experience of my own. So I'm going to share my problems with you guys as well because that makes it a lot more relatable and I can give real life experiences for you. So the two goals that regularly get self-sabotaged by myself, self-sabotage, are my weight loss efforts, obviously, and then the goal of creating this online brand, this online content creation, Diva and the Divine. So when it comes to food, for me, the real killer and the thing that tears me up emotionally inside when I'm having a self-sabotaging moment is I know that I can do this because I've done it already. Has anybody ever experienced something like that? You're like, I don't understand why this is so hard because I know I can do it. I just don't do it. And that is how it is with the weight loss thing. I've done it before. I've lost almost 60 pounds before. I know exactly what needs to happen to make my body do what I want it to do. And yet I don't do it. I mean, that's the very definition of self-sabotage right there. There's the goal, you know how to get there, but instead you just choose to stay back here or to do something to knock yourself backwards. So if that is something that I do regularly, I can go for a couple of days of doing really, really well and then out of nowhere the self-sabotage button kicks on and you gotta go in there and mess things up because why? Well, let's get into that. There are so many different reasons that one can self-sabotage. Which one of these do you fall into? The first reason we might self-sabotage is fear. Fear of what though? That really is the question. When it comes to weight loss, the only thing I can really think of is like fear of failure, fear of what other people might think, fear of succeeding and then failing, like reaching your goal and then gaining the weight back. That's a real fear. That's a real thing that happened. And so maybe the fear of doing that again, not wanting to go through that again, could trigger the self-sabotaging habits. But fear of something is a very common thing that causes one to self-sabotage. Um, in order to apply this to something else, 
else other than food when we look at like me personally and content creation. For example, fear could be fear of not being able to keep up with expectations, fear of getting negative comments, which have started every once in a while, I'll get something and I actually just got one yesterday that I was like, really? Really? But it did kind of grind at me a little bit. I deleted it. I'm over it now, but it took a little while for me to get over it. And it, it's one of those things that just naturally comes with wanting to reach this goal of creating a brand that is known. So, but it is also a reason that can make you go up oh, and put your wall up, you know what I'm saying? So fear is a very, very real reason to self-sabotage. Another reason you might self-sabotage is control. You at least have control over your failures, but you might not necessarily have control over what happens if you get to the goal that you are looking to reach. What happens after the fact? How do people react if all of a sudden you change and you develop these healthy habits, or you change and you successfully turn your little hobby into a business that's growing and thriving and people don't know how to accept that. You can't control people's reactions. You can't control what the world throws at you once you have made these changes, but you can control not getting there by sabotaging yourself. The comparison trap is something that will majorly, majorly, majorly make you self-sabotage because you can look at someone else's journey, whatever the goal is, weight loss, healthy living, building your own business, any goal that you want, looking at someone else's progress towards their version of that goal is a surefire way to get you to give up on yours or self-sabotage yourself because it triggers something in you that's like, oh, I'm never going to be that skinny or I'm never going to be that fit or I'm not going to be able to eat all that food and still look like that or I'm not going to be able to get to 100,000 subscribers or be able to make a full income on this silly YouTube channel I have. When you start to get those thoughts in your head, your body's automatic defense is going to be to self-sabotage you because then you won't get to know for sure. But then what you have to decide is, are your goals not worth working for because you might not have results that look like that other person's? The answer is obviously, of course they are still worth working for, but you have to figure out how to jump over that mental hurdle to be able to get there and get over the comparison trap. Laziness. I'm not sure what triggers this, but I know I am such a victim of this, such a victim. And how I know is, Back in college, if I go and look at myself in college, I could literally do all the things and still find time to track points and still find time to exercise and find time to do all of my classes, go to all of my rehearsals, spend time in practice room singing, voice lessons and this and that and all the things. I literally did all the things, still had time for friends, still had time to hang out, still managed to sleep and through from my sophomore to junior year, I think it was, managed to lose some weight too. I used to be able to do all the things. Now, I don't feel like I'm able to do all the things. Why? The only explanation for me can be that I got lazy and that I don't understand. And what I can't figure out is why mentally that happens. If you have any thoughts on that, let me know. As I was researching the subject this morning, another reason for why we self-sabotage that popped up that was very intriguing to me was arguing for our limitations. And that is something that we do. We try to justify why we can't do it because of a limitation that we have set on ourselves. And for me, I found this particularly interesting because I actually do have physical limitations. And I'm determined, I really don't wanna be one of those people that uses her limitations as an excuse for a reason not to do something. But I still do in some way, shape or form sometimes. For example, I will not go skiing. I will not go ice skating. Why? Because of this disability I have, I think it's a stupid move. It's just a sensible reason for me to not go and do something that will likely injure myself. So while I have those items that I'll be like, no, I'm not going to do that and my limitation is the reason, I also don't have goals that involve those action items that I am making excuses for. So for example, my fitness and health and weight loss goals do not involve my willingness to go skiing or ice skating. 
but they do involve my willingness to go to the gym and get my workout on. And if I used, oh, but this workout is too hard, or I can only do it for 10 or 15 minutes before I'm on fire, if I used that as an excuse to not do it at all, then it would be sabotaging my goal efforts. If I used the excuse of, oh, that video didn't do very well, I'm not entirely sure how to communicate this message that I want to get out on the internet, therefore I'm not going to do it, even though it might be something that some Somebody needs to hear that is a self-sabotaging that limitation towards your goals but if you have a legitimate excuse like I'm not going to go out because it's icy outside and I don't have any control over falling down which was an excuse for why I didn't leave the house during the polar vortex last week that's legit so you have to use your best judgment when deciding whether or not you are using your limitations to justify something that is legitimate or justify something that is just self-sabotaging your efforts towards your goals. That's on you to discern, not on the world to discern, but it's something to seriously think about. So those were some of the reasons why people self-sabotage and sort of how in a way, how and why we self-sabotage. And so I, as I was thinking about what I wanted to film, which by the way, key example, exhibit A of procrastination towards a goal. I am really wanting to make sure that Deep in the Divine grows, right? Especially the YouTube channel. I would love to be somebody with 100,000 subscribers one day. Do I think I'll get there? I don't know, but that's not a reason for me to stop trying, but procrastination rears its ugly head for me all the time. It is Thursday, the day before I'm uploading this video. And I put out a plea on the internet today going, guys, I don't know what to film. What do you want to hear me talk about? If that's not procrastination in a business and in a work environment, I don't know what is. So see, I am in real time trying to actively self-sabotage this thing by doing something I know I shouldn't be doing, which is procrastinating, and yet here we are. But that being said, I was researching a little bit because I was like, well, I could talk about how we self-sabotage, but I feel like I want to give you guys and myself some advice on how to stop self-sabotaging. So I came up with a couple of things and the first thing I thought of was you have to buckle down your why. Because we're talking about self-sabotaging specific goals here, you need to buckle down and truly determine what is your why. Why do you want that goal? Now grab a pen and a piece of paper or a journal and dive right in but because I don't want you to just write down I want to lose weight because I want to be skinny or I want to be healthy take that in mind be like alright I want to lose weight because I want to be thin I want to lose weight because I want to be healthy why why do you want to be healthy why do you want to be thin keep breaking it down until you really truly get to the root of why you want this thing you want to be healthy so you can run around with your grandkids when you're 80 years old? Do you want to lose weight and be skinny because you actually have some self-confidence issues that are deeply rooted in something that actually has nothing to do with your body image? You need to figure out your why. You need to turn your why into something that is truly something that sets you on fire. Otherwise, the self-sabotage is going to regularly outweigh your reason why you're doing this. It just is. That's how the mind works. So buckle down and figure out what your real why is. If you feel like sharing your why, down below. I'd love to know. Then once you've figured out your why, you have to figure out what you can regularly do to remind yourself of this why. When I was going to Weight Watchers meetings, my leader actually gave me a little picture of a can, like a can of soda with a uh, googly eye on it. And it was called the I can and I stuck the I can on my refrigerator at my parents' house. And so every time I walked up to the refrigerator, I saw the I can, I can, I can make the right choice. I can do this thing. I can, I can, I can. No, I can't, no, I won't. It was only I can. And I had that thing in a place that I would see it all the time when I was making decisions that directly impacted that goal. And you know what, which time on that journey that I had the I can up there, the time I made it down to goal. So what can you do? What reminders can you place? Can you put alarms on your phone that maybe shoot some words up on your screen to give you a little mental reminder of your why or post things somewhere? What can you do to encourage you and to put your why in the front of your mind so it's always there beating self-sabotage backwards a little bit? In that little notebook I told you to grab, I want you to also answer the following questions. 
which methods of self-sabotage do you use personally and why? What do you think your why for self-sabotage is? And once you have that answered, you can use the next couple pieces of information. I decided to go through the list and come up with ways that you could put up guardrails against the specific whys of self-sabotage. Starting with fear. What is your fear that is driving you to self-sabotage? Most likely, your fear is other people's opinion. That I can again talk about in real time with the negative comment that I received yesterday. It played off of a fear and insecurity that I have and this person managed to trigger it. And the more I thought about that comment, which you guys won't be able to find because I deleted it, what I thought, once I thought about that comment and I was like, you know what? This person's comment has nothing to do with me. They don't know what I'm actively doing. They don't know the work I actually do. And they are being triggered by something that I said as it relates to them. One of Rachel Hollis's big things is talking about how other people's opinions of you are their business. It actually likely has nothing to do with you. So if your fear is what other people think, don't worry about what other people think. It doesn't matter. It is your life and your goal and other people's reactions to your positive changes in life. If they have a negative reaction to that, that's on them. That's not on you. It's not your problem to worry about. Think about what your fear is and what could that fear really truly be triggering for you. If you are afraid that you are going to gain all of your weight back, therefore it's just easier not to lose weight at all, make it a mission to prove yourself wrong. Get there and then be like, no, no fear, no Satan. I am not going to gain this weight back. Let me show you. Whatever you can do to combat that fear, think about it, write about it, really marinate on that fear that you might have and think about how you could turn it around, turn it into a challenge, realize it's not about you, whatever you need to do to overcome that fear. Control. If you feel that control is the reason for self-sabotaging, you feel that controlling your failure is easier than walking into the unknown of the future in success, realize that you can also control the steps you make towards your success. You can't control the world's reactions to the success that you have, but like you can control the fact that you're going and binging on cookies, cakes, and ice cream, you can also control exactly what you're eating, the fact that you went and worked out today, the good, positive, healthy decisions you're making. You have just as much control over the negative as you do the positive. And it's on you to pick the positive things to control and then brace yourself for the unknown. But because you are actively trying to control all of the things you can control in a positive positive side, you'll be ready for the things that you can't. If the comparison trap is your issue, the only advice I really have is for you to stay in your lane. It doesn't matter what Joe is doing over here and Pam is doing over here. All that matters is you and your journey. It doesn't matter if they're having better results, quicker results, bigger houses, more success in their job. It, all that matters is what is right in front of you and your journey. Things that you can do to help yourself with this, take an audit of the things you are consuming around you. Are there people that make you feel really negative and down on yourself? Are there people that trigger you to be feeling like you need to keep up with the Joneses? Are there Instagram accounts that make you feel inferior instead of lifting you up? I highly, highly recommend you go through your social media accounts, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, and unfollow any account that makes you feel inferior, that makes you feel like it's triggering the comparison trap in you. you should only be following content that motivates, inspires, and uplifts you. And honestly, if I'm one of those accounts, unfollow me. I don't care. I don't want to be somebody that has a negative impact on you and causes you to self-sabotage your goals. Seriously, take, your, take the time to realize that you don't have to keep up with the Joneses. The only person you have to be better than is the person you were yesterday. Laziness. I still don't know. I don't know any techniques for really combating this. So if you guys have any suggestions, seriously, this is an open forum. This is a place for communication and community. Let's talk about it down below because I don't have a good suggestion for you. I forgot to talk about the all or nothing mentality. This is also something we use to self-sabotage when we are of the mindset of it's either all or nothing. I'm either having a perfect day, perfectly on plan, went to the gym, did all the things, didn't eat one thing wrong, or whoops, I overindulged at lunch, therefore let's trash the rest of the day, which trashes the rest of the week, which trashes the rest of the month. 
all or nothing mentality is baloney if you ask me. It can also be called like the black and white mentality and if you think about it, if you go black or white mentality, you leave out this entire beautiful Fifty Shades of Grey, if you will. There's a whole lot of grey area in between black and white and at the end of the day, in order to combat this all or nothing mentality, you need to remember that there are so many different grey areas. If you are somebody who constantly takes two steps forward and one step backwards, don't let that stop you because at the end of the day you still netted one step forward. Picture a game board. Picture the Candyland game board. How it's just one swirly thing and the goal is just to get from color to color to color. If you take three steps forward but then one step back and then two steps forward and one step back and then three steps forward and two steps back, you are still slowly but surely working your way towards the finish line through that game board. Do not let a setback stop you from realizing that you've still moved forward. That is one of the things about the all or nothing mentality. Make sure you embrace that gray area and accept that gray area and be like, okay, I might have done this wrong, but I did this, 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 and this right. But I did this and this wrong, but I did this, 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 and this right. And see that you are still further ahead than you were at the beginning. And then the last one, arguing for your limitations, the only thing I can say is don't. I mean really, just don't. Again, take it from somebody who has limitations that I could feasibly argue about. You just don't want to do it. The more you talk about something in terms of what you can and cannot do, what's that phrase? Whether you say you can or you say you can't, you're right. I believe that with every ounce of my being. If you go to a workout class and after two minutes you are huffing and puffing and you're feeling like you just can't go on anymore, if you need to stop, stop. But don't let that be an excuse for why you can't come back next week and try a little bit harder and maybe go for three, four, or five minutes. Don't let the fact that you couldn't do it right away tell you that you can't do it at all. I firmly believe that if you have something that you want to grasp, if you want this goal weight, if you want to be successful on your solo business, if you want to whatever your goal is, insert your goal here, you can do it but only if you believe you can do it. If you are like, I can lose 50 pounds, but you really don't believe you can lose 50 pounds, you're never gonna do it. If you want to run a marathon, but you don't actually think you can run a marathon, guess what? You're never gonna run the marathon. Whether you say you can or you say you can't, you are right. Do not let your limitations justify why you can't do something because that's just not a good enough reason in my opinion. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on self-sabotage. As I said, I want this to be an open conversation. So let's chat a little bit more down below. Tell me your thoughts on self-sabotage, your whys, your hows, your how to fix it. And let's get the conversation going because I think let's chat should be just that. A chat. If you like these Let's Chat videos, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you click subscribe so you can be notified every time I upload something new and become an active part of the Diva and the Divine community. And as I mentioned earlier, please, 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 if you have other suggestions, any topic, doesn't necessarily have to be weight loss related, any topic that you would like to see in a Let's Chat video, let me know because I'm happy to be doing this as a regular series. I think it'd be really good to truly start conversations on topics that people want to talk about and they need a place to talk about them. And there's no better place than a comment section. So let me start the conversation and you guys keep it going. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.